Right. Yeah, so um, with S'more, um, this is one that I've actually been using um, since about 2019, I think. Um, we've been using it for a while, and uh, we kind of initially started it just because we were looking for a way to communicate to uh, all of our schools, since we have so many schools that, <clears throat> that we work with. Um, we have seven right now that, you know, equates to a lot of staff that we can potentially get content out to. And so at the time, uh, S'more seemed like a really good option for doing that. And there's a, there's a couple of reasons why that I'll go over, but this is the general layout. So what you see in front of you here is just s'more.com. I'm not really sure how they came up with the name, but, um, but it's interface is really user-friendly. Um, you know, I would encourage teachers to try this out if it's something that they do uh, regularly. I have seen, you know, elementary school uh, teachers that like to use this. Um, but we'll look, take a look here. I'm going to log in. But, you know, when you do get to the site, if you want to sign up, you just click sign up now. And just like with everything else, you can either, you know, put your information in or you can just sign up with Google. And that makes it pretty easy if you if you do that with a lot of your other accounts. Um, so for mine, I'll go ahead and log in here. Okay, so once you get in, um, I have the Educator Basic plan. Um, and so there are some features that are held back. Um, you, can, you can look at the different plans that they have here um, to see kind of what, what are the perks of each. I've, I've just found always that the Educator Basic serves our needs. So that's kind of what we go with because we aren't really going to, go over any of the, the uh, limitations that they have with with the basic plan. So that's just what we go with. We has the unlimited newsletter still. Um, we send out a newsletter every other week. So we have a bi-weekly bi newsletter. Um, and when you're first in, what you'll notice is that the very first tab that you'll be on is the newsletters tab. So that's going to be um, where kind of everything is stored. So you have your previous newsletters here and you can see, you know, your whole stream of all of those that you've created. Uh, with the way that we do things, we, because we use the same layout, we tend to usually duplicate a previous one and then edit our materials off of that. Um, you can create folders if you want to. You'll notice here, like I, I do have some previous school years listed here in a miscellaneous folder. So you can create folders and then funnel, you know, certain newsletters into there. Um, you know, if they're from a previous year or depending on what your role is, you might have, you know, different folders that you use just to organize your, your newsletters. Um, you can start from scratch. So you'll notice that right up here, they have this um, option to start a newsletter. And what that'll do is it'll pull you into the kind of the draft system and it'll just have on the right hand side what the initial draft would look like. And all of this is editable. So you don't, you know, this is just to kind of get you started with something um, rather than trying to come up with things on your own. Um, and you can change what the purpose of the template is. So if you'll notice here it's got you know, weekly update, principal's notes, staff update, in, in, uh, event invitation, announcement, or other. Um, but when you're ready, if you, you know, if you feel like this is what you'd like, you just hit start editing. And then what it's going to do is it's going to bring you into the editing program where you can start to add things and um, change some of the things that are already in there. Um, here you've got uh, within the editing phase, you have some menus that you can work with. One thing that's really nice about this system is there's a lot of drag and drop and there's a lot of easy rearranging and easy replacing of, of items that are in the newsletter. So it's I don't find it to be confusing whatsoever. I think it's, they've done a really nice job with just making it organized. Um, on the right-hand side, this is where your different text and themes are gonna be. Um, they don't have a ton of themes here, but you can select a theme, like I could choose this one, 
but then I can still change the background colors, the fonts if I want to. I'm not stuck with those. So once I have like my initial design, I can still make those edits. Um, just under that, you have another menu item here that is the content. So these are the different types of things that you can add into the newsletter. And they have a, a pretty wide variety of things. So a uh, title, you know, you can choose where you want to add that. For us, it makes a lot of sense when we do our newsletter. And uh, let me actually just shift over to one of ours and show you. Um, we, we do our newsletter in a way where we have categories of things that we like to communicate with our staff that we send this out to. So here's one we've done uh, recently here. Let's take a look. Um, and these, this would be an example of a title. So again, if I'm editing this, um, I'm going to have all those options to add the things in. So you, you can see that menu showing up again, and you can insert any of these things. But this would be an example of a title. You can put in photos. So um, one you know, version of that is like here we have, this is a photo, um, one whole photo. But you can also do when you click photos, you can do a, one large photo like this one here, or you can do columns. So you can have you know three different pictures if you want to, and then you can add titles and descriptions to those. Um, then you get into the videos. The videos are link-based. So um, what that means is that when you, for me, when we have a video, what we do is I'll actually upload it to YouTube and then I'll take that link and I will I will pop it into here. So you'll notice this is a YouTube link video. But the nice thing about that is whatever thumbnail you used for the video on YouTube, that's what's going to show up in this space too. So what's nice about that is it makes it look really presentable as long as whatever you did with your thumbnails was you gave it a nice graphic or something like that. Um, I won't get it too much deep into these because we're, we're just kind of previewing some more, but there is a lot of options here that are worth exploring. Um, and then outside of that, if we go to, once you are ready to send something out, what's nice is S'more has these mailing lists. And so if you click on the mailing list tab, you can make custom mailing lists to send out your newsletter to others. Uh, and so for, for me, I just put in contract schools and we have a lot of teachers, educators uh, that receive our, our newsletter. You don't have to, uh, you, you, could, you could make as many mailing lists as you want. Maybe it's more by you know, content area if you're just talking about one school, for example, uh, or one district. Um, but you can add more if you need to. Or if you want, you can also remove. And when we typically tend to do that is because we have contract schools. If we have a school that leaves um, our services, then I would just remove them from here. And then they don't get sent the newsletter anymore. Um, but this is where you can edit all that and send it out when you're ready. Um, when, you, when you do that, if we go and you're going to send it out from the newsletter, uh, you can either copy a link. Each newsletter has its own unique uh, link handle at the end. And so it'll be s'more.com. Um, and there's a couple different options here for sharing it. Um, copy link is going to be where you, know, you can grab that link and then you could always just paste it into an email. But with What's nice about this is with our mailing list, when I'm done with this newsletter, I can just click share with email and I can click add mailing list, put my contract schools in there and then go ahead and send it out. I can even uh, schedule it if I want to and add a personal message. Um, I tend to just send it out. Um, our staff, because we do it biweekly, they tend to expect that it's coming. So they know, you know, they know where it's coming from and uh, it's going to be sent out on every other Friday, and that's how, how we run ours, but you could certainly do um, some different things there. Um, and I, I should mention, I guess the, the upgrade is where you would be able to schedule. Um, we don't schedule, like I said, but that's something you 
could explore if you if you wanted to. Um, and then outside of the mailing list, they have this template area, which is really nice um, because I just describe it as you know like teachers pay teachers, but for S'more, it's specific to S'more. Um, they call it the educator hive, and this is going to be where either the company submits uh, newsletters for users to use, or you might have where you have users that are creating newsletters and then making them public. Uh, in each newsletter, uh, you can choose whether you want it to be private or public. And so it would it would show up here. Uh, you can search by, you can filter out by category, or you could search for templates directly in here. So I can search for, you know, I want a back to school newsletter, and it's going to filter that out and give me some options here for these. Um, so this is going to be a fully fleshed out newsletter, but when you click on it, you're able to make it your own. So I can just choose start using this template. And then it's what, it, what I'm going to have is my own copy. And then I'm not subjected to, you know, just keeping everything that the previous creator had put in there and change anything on this using those same editing tools as I would as if I was making my own from scratch. But at least with this, I have a nice layout uh, of what I could potentially do for mine. Maybe there's some things in here that I do like and I want to keep. And then maybe there's some things that I don't and I, I want to switch out or I want to just get rid of altogether. Um, but there's a lot of great resources within that template area to allow you to create from or off of others, I, other people's ideas. Um, so that's kind of what uh, a little bit of a breakdown of S'more um, covering what we do with our newsletters, the mailing lists and the templates. Um, and I would encourage everyone to give it a try uh, and see what you think of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I, I've played around with it a little bit. Um, and, and definitely there's some neat features. And like if you can, when you, I'm not sure what you get on the free or what you get for paid for, but don't you get some insights too into the number of people that, that open it, the amount of clicks yeah. that different segments yep. of it get, which could be helpful for many people too, to make sure that whatever information you're trying to get across is getting to the people it's intended for, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll just go in quickly on this. The, uh, that, thanks for pointing that out. The, uh, on the right-hand side, you do have some analytics that show up. Um, they'll, the, the very first thing you'll see is the view, the amount of views that it got. So you can see, um, how many people are engaging with it. And, uh, so I'll show you here in a second with the analytics, but what it's nice too, is it'll actually send you updates in your email of, you know, it'll do like kind of milestones. So it'll send you email that, you know, your newsletter got its 50th view, hundredth view, 250th, and then increases from there. Um, but this is your view count. And then in the analytics, you can see a little bit further breakdown of some things. <clears throat> you can see, you know, of your where are they accessing it at? And so for this newsletter in particular, you have where most of the users that are engaging with it were from email. Um, however, you know, you can see there are some other sources as well. Uh, so you can see some, some, you have two there that access it directly from S'more. And then you have uh, where are they accessing it um, with the, or sorry, the interactions that they have on the links there. So if they're clicking on something, um, it gives you the breakdown of where were people viewing it. So were they viewing it on a mobile device or desktop? Uh, and then average time reading is two minutes. Uh, and then you do have some other breakdowns here. They've improved this uh, a little bit more. It used to be not as comprehensive. Um, and sometimes it was a little unclear to see how in-depth those interactions were. Um, they did have where it used to be a bar graph here. And you might see, you know, a per this many people spent under one minute, this many people spent five minutes, 10 minutes, and so on. 
Um, and so you can see a breakdown of how, how long people were sitting on the newsletter as well. So yeah, all of that's really helpful um, just to be able to see, you know, if you're, if you're trying to compare the content that you released, um, maybe looking at what are the, what were the things that were more popular amongst teachers that they were, were gaining more insight from compared to maybe another newsletter that didn't do so well. So, you know, the, the other thing that I think is kind of nice about it is it definitely, and you actually showed one of your stats was 54% or something we're viewing on a mobile device. And you mm -hmm. can really, really tell that this newsletter is going to format itself so that it, it works really, really well to view it either from um, a tablet or a phone uh, or on your laptop or desktop computer and it will display equally as nice. So that's kind of cool too. Yeah, and um, I think probably one other important thing to point out is if you are looking to embed it into a website, you can do that as well. You have this embed option and so you can you can incorporate this as well into your website. So that's a that's a cool thing too that you can do from the sharing section.